Ah, uh, you can do better than that. <laughs> See, I feel so much better as a person right now because you gave me that extra effort. Um, so, hey, I'm Zachary Levi, for those of you who don't know, uh, or Denzel Washington, if you watched the first video we ever put on, <laughs> on the Nerd Machine. I look like Denzel, don't I? Completely. Um, is everybody enjoying... Hi, Darren. Oh, d I heard somebody has a hat for me. Is that you? Can I have that hat? Thank you so much uh, to all, <laughs> and 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 from one psycho to another, I say thank you. What what would you say the crossover for that is? Do you, uh, obviously, you all watch Psych, uh, right? So, uh, <laughs> but there's like five people like, what? What are we here for? <laughs> Psych. I've never. Uh, do you guys all watch Chuck as well? <laughs> A good answer. That's a good answer. Um, uh, uh, Dulé and uh, Steve are on their way. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm up here, so you get a little bonus. I get to hang out with you for a second. If, if that's okay, if that's okay with everybody. And I'm going to do this cool straddle the chair thing, because I feel more powerful this way. Um, we should have got like a Game of Thrones throne to do panels in. Wouldn't that have been awesome? Just like sit there like a king with a grog or something. Um, uh, you know... When I, so just to kind of give you guys this. Oh, actually, no, I was going to ask you. So a lot of people watch Psych and, and Chuck, and I feel like uh, I've noticed that a lot on Twitter. And i got to tell you, I, I love Twitter. <laughs> I, I really love Twitter. I mean, literally, this entire thing has all been built out of me bugging the crap out of you guys or, or asking Dulé or Nathan or Seth or Zach Quinto or, you know, all of my buddies that I literally reached out to and said, hey, I'm doing this kind of crazy thing down at Comic-Con, and I really need you to bug all the people who follow you. Can you do that? And they're like, yes, we're, we're down. And, and I think a part of the, really the biggest reason why, aside from uh, me, you know, just calling in that friend favor, and, 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 and I think all of the people that have been a part of this so far, we're all kind of of the same ilk. And we all, I really only wanted to bring people here that I felt like had a, a true appreciation for, the world of nerd and the world of Comic Con and and, uh, and and all of you guys, you know, because there's a lot of celebrities. Obviously, we know in the last ten years Hollywood has had a really huge presence down here in, in San Diego, and I think that that's a really incredible thing. And I think that there's some celebrities now that come down that ten years ago might not have. Uh, but for me, I really wanted to make sure that there was kind of a purity of the panels that we did here, and that they were really ones that I felt you guys who come down and and myself, uh, who love uh, Comic-Con, would be like, yeah, that's our crowd. That's our group. So uh, <laughs> I think it was actually a fan on Twitter, because I hadn't even gotten to talk to Dulé. Uh, and and uh, somebody on Twitter, I don't know who you were, but thank you, uh, were like, hey, what? Oh, was it you? Were you the one who convinced Dulé to come do this? Savannah, you're a rock star. I appreciate it very much. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and, and I get a text message from Dulé. He's like, hey man, what's this thing you're doing at Comic-Con? Because people are bugging me on Twitter. I gotta be a part of this. I'm like, that's the power of Twitter right there. That's how it works, you know? And we haven't, aside from the articles that were online of people that found out about it, like CNN or Forbes or whatever, we didn't really reach out to anybody. I just bugged you guys and you guys responded in a huge way. And, and again, aside from all of us being of the same kind of cut from the same cloth, I think one of the reasons why I was able, why, why people wanted to be a part of it, and even more importantly, why you guys, I feel, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if you get an opportunity to be in kind of an, an intimate setting like this, and you can secure your seat, and, and it's, you know, there's really no bad seat in the house, ex except for when I'm here, and I can't see whoever's behind this pillar, but we'll work on that for year two, so don't worry about that. It'll be some kind of a, I don't know, little, just like mirrors or something. You can just, just like rear views. Oh, check it out. Um, but I think one of the coolest and most important things that we're trying to accomplish in this is giving you guys a unique experience, giving the panelists a unique experience to interact with you, and that it all raises thousands of dollars for Operation Smile and helping kids all over the world. And I really, by the way, if you guys, oh, cheers. Thank you very much. Uh, applaud. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's, uh, it, it's something that's really near and dear to my heart and I've been involved with for quite some time and, and one day they called me and said, would you be one of our official ambassadors? And I was like, look, I've never been an ambassador for anything, so just having a title like that, I should have some badges, I should have some medals, maybe a monocle, I don't know. I don't know what ambassadors look like, so, uh, but it's been really cool to be able to incorporate that because I, it, you know, you, I, I'm all about just, I don't know, 
awesome. I'm all about like, or I, excuse me, let me phrase that. Let me phrase that. That's not, that's not, I'm not, I am so awesome. No, I, what, I, what I'm saying is that I believe in, I believe in like putting awesome things out there. I believe in looking for like, not just win-win situations, but win-win-win-win-win-win-win, as much as you can do. So that's why we went to break.com, and we got to make those cool nerd PSAs. Did you guys get to watch those at all? Anybody get to see those? Were they, were they funny? Did you like them? Awesome. Did anybody not like them? Yeah? Was it fun? Can we have her escorted out, please? I'm kidding. No, no, no. No, I appreciate the honesty. Thank you. I do. Uh, no, you're just kidding. Uh, are you wearing a nerd machine hat? I love you. Thank you. You can not like anything, but by the hat. Fantastic. Uh, oh, I'm fully going to shill the product. Don't, don't think I won't. Um, but it's, it's, uh, to me, this is kind of one of those things. You know, I think that, uh, you know, one, uh, at being at Comic-Con, our Chuck fans have been the lifeblood of our show. We've, we've literally been on the chopping block every single year, as you guys well know. And, and every year you fight for us and you, and you, and you bring us back. And, uh, <laughs> man, I wish I wasn't such a sap. Uh, and, it, and it, I can't even tell you how much it means as, a, as an entertainer, as an artist, to, to know that what you put out there isn't just going into some void that nobody gives two craps about. And instead, it really resonates with people. And people go, man, I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on that journey. I dig what you do. And, um, and to me, that was so much of the, when I was looking for the confidence and the faith of like, is this HQ even going to work? Are people even going to show up? Am I tweeting to nobody? You know? Uh, it, knowing that our fans, uh, that I think, again, are, I think, well represented here, uh, and also so stoked that you are here for Psych, and this, you psychos are in mass, and thank you so much for being a part of it. Um, I believed, I believed that we could do this, and I believe that we could all be a part of something awesome, and we could really make a difference in the world, and give you guys a full, you know, uh, 45 minutes to an hour, a Q&A that's all yours. It's not, it, it, and by the way, the moderators at Comic-Con are fantastic, and, and we've been very blessed to have people like Damon Lindelof, like, asking us questions, and all I ever wanted to do was ask him about Lost. So, you know, it's not, uh, like, no, but really, about the statue. Um, the smoke monster, uh, um, but in fact, we can just talk about Lost for a little while, if you guys want to. Uh, Lost fans, yes, no? <laughs> Dharma. What? Oh, oh so, no, I know. Oh, they here? Oh, fantastic, okay. Well, come on, I was vamping. I didn't know what was going on. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Um, I'll do a musical in a little while. Don't worry about it. It'll be great. Uh, well, then forget it. And we're not talking about Lost. We're here to talk about Psych. Everybody pump for Psych. That's what I want to hear. All right, first, the creator of Psych, uh, Steve Franks, everybody. Steve Franks. Come on, buddy. Oh, let me get this stuff out of here. Let's get, actually, we. Hi, how's it going? Very good, thanks. You have a microphone. Uh, number five. Can we get number five up? Number five up. One hello, hello. Hey, hello. Steve Franks, everyone. And without further ado, Dule Hill, everyone. One of the coolest men in Hollywood. He gets to put an accent above one of the letters in his name. Very few people get that. Let's see. Hold on, let's get a mic for you. Can we get number three? Number three? Hey. By the way, Dulé and I have, from the pilot, have tried to make up our own special handshake that we wanted to sweep the nation. And so far, it hasn't caught on. It's been five and a half years. This is how we greet each other. I'd like to Every see Every right time now. we see each other. Anyway, let's just approach. Please do that I, in front of as many people as possible. I, I can't possibly imagine why that hasn't caught on. I, it's very short, too. You don't even have to. It, it, it's the kicking we just had. Zach, do it with me. Come on, Aaron. <laughs> right, right, right. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey. It's like, it's like we're about to just charge. You're, yeah, like, you're yeah. literally like in Matador. Yeah, yeah. That's Guys, psychos, do like Steve, go. Q&A, all yours. Wait, wait. Now, you know, I know that y'all were expecting James O'Day. He was supposed to be here, but, you know, he had to rush back to L.A. But we do have somebody here that I hope you all will be happy to see. You know what I mean? Some call him Lassie. <laughs> Timothy Amison, everybody. Timothy Amison.
Surprise! Do we have a Timothy? <laughs> Timothy. We have a mic on your chair here right behind you. Right there, number two. Can we get uh, number, number two, two up? That was the white dude version. I can't. So, so what is Steve doing there? <laughs> He's in a different realm of white, man. So what's happening at Nerd HQ? Oh, can we have... Hold on, we, we have somebody else? Is there somebody else here? No, no. Oh, there is none. I've been, I've been. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. Executive oh, yeah, producer sorry. Chris Henty. Yeah, Executive well. producer yeah. Chris Henty. Come on, Chrissy. See, we're just full of surprises at the HQ. There we go. Chris, get up here. And you get a microphone too. And if you all follow me on, if you all follow me on Twitter next week, if I can find the footage, good luck. I'm going to tweet some really good footage of. Chris Hensley busting his ass <laughs> on the football. <laughs> on the, right outside the set of sight. Yes, coming from, coming we were playing ago. catch, and I took a header, and somebody had it on video, and Dulé, being the prankster that he is, decided to like call my wife, get a copy of the video, and send it out to a bunch of people. It's so old, but now it's the only thing he can think to do because we didn't tell him about the psych t-shirt yesterday. <laughs> uh, so he's trying to get me back. Who, uh, who has a question? What, yeah, is, it, is, it? is this a question and answer? Is how it goes? These are like the Memorex chairs. Well, first of all, before I, before I even start, before I start, I was supposed to link up yesterday and it didn't happen. So where is Erin? There we go. Come, I've been promising you a hug on Twitter for a while, so we have to get that out the way. And for uh, we're going to have a virtual real Heather, the real Heather G is going to be in the middle of us. So just, you know, you know what I mean? She tried to come to the party yesterday and it got really crazy. Do they like, tell, tell everybody who she is? Well, this is Erin, at Mock Turtle Power, if you want to view her on Twitter. And she's good people, though, really good people. It's good to finally, you know what I mean? I like to be a man of my word. It's great to finally see you. This is Tim Amundsen. And that's Steve Franks right there. Uh, can, I, can I get in on this? <laughs> and then, of course, that's Chris Hansey. One more, we gotta get one more. Thank you, Aaron. It was just one. Just one. Okay. There we go. Wait, that, that was much longer than mine. What's happening right now? <laughs> this is our whole show. We just do hugs. Thanks for coming, everybody. I got to get back to L.A. Thank you all very much. Uh, someone over here had a question, though. The Facebooks of the characters, because I know like every single one of the characters has a Facebook that are all linked, and you all like write on each other's walls. So okay, so you guys don't know about this. Yeah. I mean, every uh, single character has a Facebook, and they're all linked together, and they all write on each other's walls, tag each other in posts. It, it might be people in this room. Okay, I was just I'm saying I was wondering if it was fans or if it was you guys. Am I funny on it? <laughs> um, no, you write. You're usually complaining. <laughs> oh. It might be delay, actually. <laughs> <laughs> those, those in the first season, uh, Deshaun and Gus were. I don't know if it was it was Tim, Tim Meltrager, who's one of our writers, and also uh, also played with us yesterday, Friendly Indians, uh, when we uh, when we played at the panel. Um, uh, he he did the Lassiter. No, he didn't do Lassiter. He did Sean and Gus. And since then, I'm too busy to ask him about that. So <laughs> I don't know, but. Uh, Tim uh, did all the blogs, all the Lassie blogs for... I, I did the Lassie blogs on the website and then got really busy with life. So then I said, hey, I've heard of this thing called Tweeter? <laughs> and how's it... Because the, the blogs, eventually I was just answering questions in the character anyways. So I was like, how about we just make this really short? And then that's how the last... So I Twitter's... Tw I tweet? I, I yeah. twerk? You're a Twitterer. Oh, you. Twitterer as, as Lassiter. Um, I mean, that's all. I mean, I, Facebook, I don't know nothing yeah, about. That's news to me. I didn't know anything about that, so. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea who that is. But it's not us, though, so. You can yeah. call, call them out. We'll, too, like, we'll find yeah, out. We'll, we'll find out. It's possible that it, it might be the digital group in New York oh, that does it. Oh, yeah. It could be, but. Yeah, it started out as Tim, and it became someone else, so I think. But uh, let's just give Tim credit. And then whoever's doing all this hard work is uh, is 
not going to get any credit at all. Or it's some Chechnyan somewhere <laughs> in, in a basement getting paid six shekels. There we go. Might be coming off as a newbie, uh, but we love the show. Thanks, guys, for doing it. Uh, thank, you. thank you for watching. Can you explain the whole pineapple thing for me? <laughs> Steve. Well, before this job, I used to work at a little place called Disneyland, California. And I used to work at a place called the Tiki Room, which is sponsored by Dole Pond. Wow, just charity for the Tiki, Tiki Room. Room fans in the house. It really is like one of the worst rides at Disneyland. It's not even a ride. You sit in there and watch 45-year-old animatronics go like this. Uh, but uh, it was sponsored by Dole Pineapple, so I developed a deep-seated love for the pineapple, which is the international welcome fruit. So, and then in the pilot, there was a pineapple in Gus's apartment, and uh, James threw it into a shot. And uh, when, when James finds something ridiculous that he likes and can throw into the show, he will passionately embrace it and not let go. So there was this shot, and it, it made no sense to the rest of the, uh, of, of the episode. And uh, we left it in because we loved it. And then the next episode, like, let's put another pineapple in. And I have a big history with pineapple. So uh, and I believe the line was, shall we slice this up for the road? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and now it's just fun because, you know, uh, and we, we hide one in, in just about every episode. Sometimes you can't find it because we've cut it out of the episode because it was in a scene <laughs> that we needed to trim. But it's, it's kind of a lot of fun to hide, and uh, it's, it's, it's a good little game. And, uh, and most importantly, a fresh, well-done well pineapple can't be beat. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah, it, it was odd when, when season two, they asked if they could hide the pineapple in the form of a tattoo on my left buttock. <laughs> um, and I'm gay, I mean, so <laughs> we did it. I can't show it now, there's kids in the house. But. But if, if you don't see it in, in the actual episode, know that there's a shot of my, yeah, I swear. So. And I've heard that's delicious too, Tim. <laughs> you should be glad they didn't ask to hide it inside your buttocks. <laughs> well, that's what they tried first. And I'm like, no, hey, there's a line. I may be an actor whore, but there's a line I will, wait, you'll pay me how much? <laughs> wait, are there kids here? So we would... uh, yeah, sure. What is your name? How you doing, Heather? <laughs> awesome. Oh, thank you. Okay, so my husband and I are here on our honeymoon, actually. Congratulations. Hey. Nice. Is that him? Thank you. Yes, this is my husband, Spiro. Spiro, cool name. Spiro. We had a director named Spiro who did um. That's his last name though. What's his last name? Oh, yeah. Spiro. Spiro. Oh, okay, okay. But close though. <laughs> close enough. We feel like we know you anyway. And you as a woman, <laughs> but besides that. <laughs> All right. So people back home think it's kind of weird that we came here for our honeymoon. But everyone back home loves psych, just like we do. So we were kind of wondering if we could, at your convenience, get a picture with you guys so we can kind of rub it in their faces. Let's just do it now. Let's do it right now. Where are you yeah. from? Where is home? Chicago. Come on up. There it is. Chicago, by the way, is the home of Garrett's Popcorn, my favorite popcorn in all the world. Gosh, it's delicious. Andy Berman, one of our writers, uh, lives, came from Chicago, and he went back last week, and he had to miss two days in the office, and I told him he could do it as long as he, uh, as long as he brought us to Garrett's Popcorn. By the way, does everybody know uh, Sparrow and Spyro? Now I'm confused. Nice to meet you. All right, who's taking the picture here? <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Tim, I noticed you didn't you didn't kiss Spiro. I know what happened. Come on. So with that. <laughs> there it is. That's how they do it in Greece. <laughs> All right, who's next? Show text! I do have a question. Uh, 
Will we ever see Dobson, or is he forever going to remain faceless like the giant lab tech owl? Tim, <laughs> take it. The only way we're ever going to see Dobson is, I think, one of the f it'll be the f one of the final shots of the entire series, and it will reveal. It'll you know someone will turn and it'll be Martin Sheen or something like that. Like <laughs> we've got to sell Dobson. It's got to be, I don't know, Barack Obama will come on and do it as Dobson. So. Who is next? That is, very, that is a very inside question for yes. those. That's a good question. You know, I, I will say I end up having to deal with a lot of the initial uh, casting lists and, and stuff like that because I'm in L.A. most of the time when these guys are working and we're thinking about the next episodes. And uh, Zach, is, is, it, is he here? Yeah. So Why he's exact to commit right now. He's he's always he's always he's always on a list when they're not in production because our casting director loves him and we love him, and we always thought it would be really funny to have him come on and do sort of like a you know psychic versus a cool spy guy or something like out of character look obviously, um, but but uh, I, we're, you know it's up to him. We'll have him on. So Let's we, pressure we him up to have Zach. Yeah. Oh oh Zach is oh a question there. Oh okay. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Jenna. I'm Jay Vento on Twitter. What's happening, Jay Vento? <laughs> we interact a lot on Twitter. Yes. Yes, we do. Um, my question is for Steve and Chris. I want to know if we're going to get more Chief Vic or Buzz stories this season. Here's the funny thing. Sage Brocklebank. But by the way, in the pilot, the uh, character McNabb was listed as dancing officer. And it was one of the first Sean visits, and Sean saw him practicing his step for the wedding, and uh, that's one of the things he read. And uh, so we had to give him a badge, and there was a handful of badges there, and there was McNabb, and I had a friend who worked with me at the Tiki Room, it's all tying together now, <laughs> named Matt McNabb. So he became a McNabb uh, off of that. And since then, we thought, oh, let's bring that tall guy back. And, uh, and then we, we actually, all the writers have sort of fallen in love with uh, the character McNabb. And uh, whenever we get him, here's the, here's the downside. Off of this, he's become kind of a big actor up in Canada. So a lot of times we can't get him or he's too expensive. So <laughs> he's like, ah, this isn't season one anymore, Steve. So you can't have McNabb walk in, but yeah, we uh, we he's, he, we love to have uh, he's our go-to guy, and Sage is always funny, and uh, and it was great for me because in the episode where where Sean and Juliet finally hook up, I, w I was really stumped on how am I going to get a scene where 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 Sean pours his heart to someone and is inspired to go and open up to her. And I was, I was saying, well, it could be, it couldn't be Laster. Obviously, Gus, he talks about it. And I go, wouldn't it be funny if it was a scene between McNabb, the dancing officer extra in the first one? And uh, it was a great scene. And uh, it was one of my favorite scenes uh, of all of last year. And, uh, and Sage, is, uh, Sage is a lot of fun. We're concerned about Sage, though, because um, in his free time, he plays high stakes poker with like some dangerous Russian gangsters. <laughs> so when we cast him, we're always a little nervous that the phone's just going to keep ringing and ringing and no one can find him. Does he ha still have all his fingers? <laughs> yes, exactly. Hi. Um, what is your name? Liz. How you doing, Liz? Good. I actually met you yesterday. Really? Good to see you again. At the TV Guide. <laughs> um, my question was, will there be more Gus or Lassie romances this season? Well, you know, we worked a thing where we went out a couple of dates, um, and then it didn't test well. Yeah, I don't know what I mean, happened. in certain markets, it tested great, <laughs> but, but no, um, yeah, there, uh, there is a very, very big life-changing uh, thing for Lassie coming up in one of the first several episodes where Lassie gets a lady. Ooh. The, uh, the lovely and talented Christy Swanson comes to town, and, um... Lassiter finds a, a place in his heart that he did not know was there, and hilarity ensues. Thank you. And for uh, Gus, Gus takes a lot of swings at bat this year. <laughs> he makes valiant efforts at love. He may get a hit, run towards first base, run with all his speed, and get thrown out at the last step. 
<laughs> uh, a lot. It'll be, it'll be fun to watch, though. A lot. So many times that the, the network actually <laughs> called us up at one point and went, really, again? <laughs> like, it, it's getting yeah. creepy. Yeah, yeah. Gus, is, Gus is feeling a little desperate. We're like, well, no. Nah. Desperate, but I, yeah, he's the only one not in a relationship right now, and he might be a little overzealous. This might be the season of Creepy Gus. <laughs> yeah, Creepy Gus is coming. But I contend, in, in the string of beautiful women we've had on Psych, literally, the most attractive women we've ever had are the women that Gus has fallen for, so you really can't blame the poor guy. That is true. That is very true. But Diora Baird, Juliana Gwill, Jessica, Jessica Lucas, Luth, Lucas uh, who else? No, no, yeah, that's season one. That's uh. Oh, this is all coming this up. This is all this season. This is all coming yeah, up. Yeah. This is all coming up. So yeah, it's gonna happen a lot. Who's next? Uh, uh, well, we can do both of you. I was, I was actually talking. Same to time. At the same time. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chancellor, and I wanted to know. Uh, How you doing, Chancellor? I'm good. How are that's you? That's a cool name, Chancellor. You cannot go wrong in life with the name Chancellor. <laughs> Thank you. You're already important. <laughs> Um, I wanted to know if the Michael Jackson impression in the first Yang episode was originally written into the script, or was that something you came up with? No, that was written into the script. I, uh, Rodé wrote it, and of course he wrote it knowing that I would do it. <laughs> and I was like, dude, what is this? <laughs> but uh, I really didn't have an exact idea what he was talking about until we got to the day, and then we talked about it, and I was like, okay, cool. We knocked it out. It was, I mean, it was fun, you know. But Rodé knows me anyway, so he puts stuff in there sometimes for me to do and have fun with. I really liked it, so it cool. made me laugh. <laughs> Thanks, man. What was that one? Uh, hee hee, and the King of Pop, yeah. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> this wasn't in there. This wasn't. <laughs> Hi, my name is Arlene. Uh, I'd like to say that I think the seasons have stayed really fresh, and your episodes are always outstanding. And I, you know, applaud you for that. One of my favorites was um, the actor who was on Wings, who played Sean's uncle. Are you going oh, to bring? Are you going to bring him back ever again? Because it looked like you could continue with something with him in the future. That's a Sage Brocklebank situation times a thousand because Stephen Weber is always working. Yes. Yeah. So we are we are actually doing a uh, because that uh, Uncle Jack was sort of our um, ad adventure treasure hunter character, and we're doing an Indiana Jones episode. Start shooting on Monday, and <laughs> we're bringing back Carrie Elwes for that one. And and Dulé doesn't know this yet, but on Friday I have him scheduled to be um, lowered into an abandoned factory hanging upside down. <laughs> so I hope he's cool with it. Thank and you very much, Steve. And the, the floor is covered with snakes, right? <laughs> no snakes. How about that? We heard you, but you, we want you to say it again. I really we want Chancellor to be able to hear you. <laughs> and I love the way the characters have developed. After the years now, how much opportunity do you have to put your own touch on those characters, put yourself into those characters? Well, I always say with any long-running show, I think as time goes on, you start to blend, blend character characteristics of yourself that have an off-screen, and you bring it to screen. A lot of the stuff that goes on between myself and Rodé will be, We'll have an off screen with us playing around. And we'll say, dude, we gotta put that in the next episode. Like, dude, we gotta put that in the next scene. So, uh, I mean, I say at the beginning it was like more, just say 95% just an outside character. And as time goes on, it becomes more like 60, 40. You know? Yeah, I mean, as, as the, the writers get to know us and we, you know, you, you spend such long hours together, it's inevitable that they start picking up on, on who you are, which in terms of last year, boy, that's scary. <laughs> like, but certainly, I, I always say that, like, if you spend any time with Tim, you realize he is Lasseter. No, I'm not joking. I'm just talking. There, but there's an aspect of, of it, how he deals with, with Sean and Gus, which is just pretty much me dealing with my, my daughters. It's like <laughs> these little kids who will not listen, and you, you can't hit them. But so all you can do is, like, give this really stern look, and I do the voice, and which, by the way, my daughters could get in the face with a voice. They, like, it doesn't work, but I keep, but it doesn't work with these guys either, so I keep ramping it up, and it's not that far off, it's okay. Oh, the judging game. The judging game. Um, here. No, she, no. She actually talks about the Kevin Smith film. The film I wasn't in. Kevin <laughs> Smith. Uh, which is weird, because Sean Potter was the sweetest human being, the character I played in this other series, 
like just a sweet social worker and and just like wow, that's a different guy from last year. No. Uh, but I think that it's um it's interesting because we wouldn't I mean without these guys and and some stuff they bring to these characters, we wouldn't have you know what and we wouldn't have we wouldn't have come on son. And uh, and now we wouldn't have the new one, which is I know, you know. <laughs> Come on, son. Come on, son. Obviously, though, was Ed Lover. You know what I mean? And so that the first time we did it was very important to me that we acknowledge Ed for for doing his thing. Now we we just ran with it, and we have a very well. I think it's kind of known anyway. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that Ed yeah, Lover makes Ed Lover an comes on the show this season uh, <laughs> to do his whole his whole bit. That's that's one of the good things about Psych is we'll pick up on something and somehow we'll work it into the script. You know what I, mean? I mean, they've been doing the come on son for like a season and a half. They've been up to almost too long now. Um, <laughs> and I, and we were up there. I was up there with Andy Berman, who was prepping his episode, and uh, and we were like in the car on on the way to work one morning in Vancouver. And I think Rodé was in the car, and we were talking, and some somebody from Rodé was like, "Come on, son, whatever." And like, you know, this is actually a really good episode. We should actually reach out to Ed Lover and see if we can get him to come up here. Like, do you think he'd do it? I was like. I think he'd do it. He's, like, he's always tweeting about how much he loves Psych and the shout outs and everything else. And like one phone call to our casting director down south, one phone call to like, and she she like put out, she didn't know how to get a hold of him. She put out like a breakdown, like if anybody knows who, uh, how to get a hold of Ed Lover. Like her phone rings like six hours later. Oh, it's Ed Lover. Are you looking for me? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, he loves the show. He loved to do it. Like, you know, three days later he was on a plane or a week later he was on a plane and, and he was shooting a thing. And, and that is really fun. But again, like, this is stuff that wouldn't happen without, um, you know, what all these guys bring to the characters and the stuff from their life that they, the stuff from their life that they think Sorry. is funny. Um, and they bring it to life and then we riff on it. And then you'll see in the next, e in the next scripts come down the pipe, there'll be a come on zone riff and there'll be this riff and there'll be a what. And it just gets written in because now we know them and the writers just. The new adapt. one coming is, uh, man, you don't know. I'm just giving you the warning. Man, you don't know. So that's going to be the next one for the you know, the second half of season six. Wait, hold on. That, this girl in the green has had her hand up for like an hour, and oh, I'm, I'm starting to think that circulation is going to stop going through her arm. Thank you. It did for a while. I was worried. Um, <laughs> Wait, what's your name? Hanukkah. Hanukkah? Yeah, what? I like the holiday, nice. but I'm not sure. Have you met <laughs> Chancellor? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's more of something to say to you guys. Um, I really want to thank you because not only is your show amazing, but the foundation of my best friendship with my best friend Kim is based on our love for your show. And I would not have anything wow. without that. So wow. I really want to thank you guys. And I know you're probably going to hate me for asking because a million people are probably going to ask you, but I was really wondering if we could take a picture for you. We drove four hours just for this. Only for this event. Wow. Just for this. Only for yeah, come on out. Come on out. <laughs> thank you so much. Hanukkah and Kim, right? Yes. It's so and you're welcome, welcome, by the way. <laughs> Four hours of driving just for this. Come on out quickly. Let's keep it going. All right, who's taking the picture? Okay. Because the only other person's name I know is Chancellor, and he's way in the back. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Okay, you go next. <laughs> she doesn't need a microphone either. <laughs> My family says that. You shouldn't say things like that. Um, going along with character development, how much input, since you guys play these characters, how much input do you ever give the writers about what they would say, or do you ever say, no, Lassie would never do this, or Gus would do this, not this? Do you do that kind of stuff, or will they accept it from you? Tim gives lots of input on what he would say. First of all, he would never have that gun. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, personally, I don't, I don't need to. These, these writers are so dialed in with, with who these characters are. And, and after, like I said, after spending this much time together, it's just it's so natural. And you get these scripts, and it's once in a blue, blue moon, which doesn't happen very often, by the way, do I ever go, nah, that doesn't really make sense to me, but I almost never, because they're so good at their job. 
if, the, if there is something that um, Dulé doesn't really agree with, there's usually a pattern that happens, and I'll let, I'll, let, I'll let Steve do it, but it starts with a phone ring in his office, and then you'll hear the following. Actually, when somebody pitches something, they say, oh, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if Gus is dressed up in a clown suit? And then what happens is someone just comes and kicks him right in the groin, and then I just stop, and I go, hold on a second. Ring. Uh, Steve Franks is Dulé Hill. Uh, yeah, Gus in a clown suit? Mm, not feeling it. <laughs> That is true. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Unfortunately, we know each other well enough that we s I stop things before because our writers, our writers, they're they're the most creative, crazy guys. We give them so much license, but they go to the edges and then beyond the edges. And I'm like, all right, listen, you know, fast forward to Dulé, you know, seeing that in the script, it's it just doesn't right. happen. Uh, did you say I'm in a clown suit? <laughs> I just want to say also that your program has remained such a breath of fresh air with all the other stuff that goes around it. It is always fresh. It is always funny. It is always semi-believable. <laughs> um, Thank you. And totally entertaining all the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We aim for semi-believable. That's our thing. <laughs> the question always is, could this happen? You know. And if we can say yes, then uh, then we're on board. Well, really, truly, I, I gotta give props to Steve Franks because it's the launching pad. The this pilot that he wrote and the characters he created on the script, on the script before any of us were casted, came from Steve. So, you know, you could give him the thanks. All right. <laughs> well, and right back to these guys because we do give them crazy stuff, and you guys make it believable. And you know, <laughs> all, pretty much always. Okay, you over there. Wait, what's your name? Uh, I'm Lena. Lena. Uh, you know what? There's Chancellor and Hanukkah here. Yeah, maybe come up with a nickname that's kind of a little <laughs> colorful. <laughs> Say what is Hanukkah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I thought you were coming up with one. Uh, no, my friends are just leaving. Can I call you Xanadu? <laughs> um, if you want to, sure, go for okay, it. Question for Xanadu? Uh, yeah, um, my friends and I noticed you guys have a lot of product placement in the show, and we were wondering if you guys had a favorite one. Um, <laughs> a lot of what? Product placement? Okay, well, there is, I, you know, this is, we, because a lot of things come through I with product know. placement, and, and we're actually, because our, our characters are such consumers, that, uh, that we get a lot of offers to put things in it. I happen to love Snyder's and Hanover pretzels. <laughs> I have, on, on our way, we go to baseball spring training in Arizona every year. I've been multiple times to the Snyder's of Hanover factory <laughs> to buy it. So when Snyder's came to us, I'm like, anytime, anytime, <laughs> bring it in. I want to promote it. And uh, uh, the, the funny, there we go, right there. there but the is. funny thing is we, we <laughs> the funny thing is because we give out more free product placement than any show in the history of television because we did a run on Snickers last year that Snickers should have paid us like $500,000. We got nothing from them. Uh, because we love, we just love to talk about products that we like and things we like. And I actually, there's a product called the Coke Freestyle Machine, which is available in movie theaters. Yes, thank you. And it's 110-ish flavors that you can do. It's like a computer, wow. so you can do Diet, caffeine free, cherry or orange Coke. And you push all that, and it makes it's phenomenal. And I actually said, can somebody call Coke and see if we can get one of those? And I'll write it into an episode, not because we'll get any money for it, because I want the world to know about this amazing <laughs> thing. Okay. Um. So uh, when we tried to get it, and then, for, and then so we, we worked it out and we wrote it into an episode, and then they had trouble like getting it into Canada, and they're like, they can't get it through the border. I'm like, and, and like everybody's freaking out. I go, I just wanted to write it into a show so it didn't happen. So if you're out there, Coke freestyle people, just put them all around my house. That's what I want. <laughs> okay, I, I can say, uh, but real quick, I know I don't really have a favorite product, but I can speak for Rode. I think he would probably say Axe. He's like obsessed with Axe. Like if, especially if he's directing an episode, you're gonna find it like in a cabinet somewhere or, or something. He loves Axe products for some reason. Which I don't think we get a dime for. <laughs> They send us product, but that's about it. I, I like the Colt Firearm Company. <laughs> um, I have one more thing. Me and my friends made t-shirts. We were wondering if you guys would see them and tell us if you like them. We would, we would see them for sure. You may not like the answer. If you held them up, we would. Team 
Dude. Dude. Sean, Dude. Team Laster, and Dude. Team Gus. There it is. Yeah. Very nice. You guys like them very much. See that. Let's hear for Zana doing her friends in nice. t-shirt. <laughs> Who's next? Okay, how about you? Hi. Uh, Hi. show is wonderful. It's so great to see you guys. You're wonderful, thank and it's so you. great thank to see you. you. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Tell her to stop talking. I she already has her time. <laughs> we won't friend. I'm just curious. I love you all. Why did you choose Santa Barbara as the setting for the show? It's uh, It was the only place that my wife and I, when we were dating, we could afford to go on vacation. So... We would go there, and, and, and I thought, you know, I needed a town that wasn't a big town, and it would be, you know, but enough to have real crime-ish, to be semi-believable, as you say. Uh, and you do realize that Santa Barbara is the crime capital of the world. <laughs> there have been, if, if our show is accurate, there have been more murders in Santa Barbara than in Los Angeles and New York combined. But, uh, and then when, when we pitched it, uh, I said, Santa Barbara, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be so great. Maybe we'll go shoot in Santa Barbara. And the network looked at the budget, and they go, so do you want to change the show to Seattle? We'll shoot in Vancouver. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's raining all the time up there. So uh, I, I said, all right, we'll, we'll go to Vancouver, but it's still going to be Santa Barbara. So we lugged around the same 12 palm trees and prayed, <laughs> prayed for the sun to come out, which, by the way, has not done this entire summer. So uh, this is all the summer we're getting right now is these three days here. In we were LA. shooting in big North Face puffy jackets and umbrellas. We just torrential downpours one week ago. <laughs> it's, it's I feel bad for the city of Ojai, which is a beautiful, beautiful little place, you know, up north of Santa Barbara. And we, every time we have to shoot something that doesn't take place in town, they're going away. We have an episode coming up um, called Neil Simon's Lover's Retreat where – Sean and, Sean and Juliet take a little getaway, and they go on a vacation. But we go up to, like, Whistler, and there's, like, fog and rain and snow-capped mountains, and we just call it Ojai. So <laughs> people that actually want to go to Ojai, like, it's cold out there. We're not, we're not taking a vacation to Ojai. I'm, like, waiting for the Chamber of Commerce to call us. It's nice here, you know. Like, ah, uh, can you stop calling that nonsense Ojai? <laughs> How about this girl? Her hand's been up for a while. Wait, what's your name? Sheridan. Sher that's good. Oh. I like it. Yes. Sheridan, Xanadu, Chancellor. <laughs> Hanukkah. Hanukkah, right? And Kim. And Kim. <laughs> <laughs> what drew you guys to the show? Like, what made you want to be in it? Uh, well, for me, they said, would you like to be in it? <laughs> and if you do, we'll pay you. <laughs> so that was pretty much it for me. I mean, that pretty much is how it goes, I think, for most actors. Anything else they tell you is BS. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, so I'm about to tell you a little bit of BS, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but for myself, I just come off of a drama. So I really wanted to go... Really? I, I, did, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> but I wanted to do a, a comedy. I wanted to have more of a leading role and do a comedy. I thought that would be a, a nice, fun change. If I had a chance to do it, I would jump at it. And then when I got a chance to read this script, which I actually got to give credit to my agent, because he was like... You know, no, uh, I was going on my my first wedding anniversary, and he was like, "Go take another look at it. I mean, really focus it and see what you you know, take the, really take a look at it." And I said, "All right." And it was hot as hell out there, and I read the script, and I was like, "You know what? This would be kind of fun. It would be, it's exactly what I'm talking about." And once I had a meeting with Steve and we talked about where the character would go, I was like, "This is going to be a blast." You know, so uh, that's what drew really that's what drew me to it is doing the comedy, doing the leading role, and then once I met with Steve and saw his energy, I was like, "All right." This it, is it's fun. really it's really hard reading. Um, I'm uh, speaking like I'm an actor, but I, I, know, I know a lot of them. Um, but I think when you read one script and you're trying to commit to potentially six, seven, ten years or whatever of your life to something, it's hard Come to on, read. Son, ten years, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody up for ten seasons of Psych? <laughs> there it is. There it is. Uh. <laughs> uh, Yosti Franks. <laughs> The last three without delay. I mean, you know that question you asked the crowd over there? <laughs> we can call and see if Omar Epps is available. <laughs> Dulé tells this great story about every time he auditions for something, you know, you get like the four actors you bring in, and then they all sit in the room and wait to go in one by one, and every time he shows up, the thing, Omar Epps is sitting on the other side of the room, and every time Omar Epps gets a job. No, 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 no. It, it only happened once. Okay. It happened once, and now I'll tell the story. 
I was on West Wing and I was testing for a show called House. You know what I mean? And you know, you're going back and forth, you're doing the deal, this and that, boom, boom, and trying to make things work. And finally, we got the deal worked out where I can go and test. And I'm in the room and it's actually myself. And I remember Hugh Laurie was sitting, sitting next to me. I didn't know who he was at the time. And I remember, uh, is the guy Jesse? Is it Spent? Yes, yes. I remember him being in the room too, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow, I'm the only black dude up in here. So I guess I really must be the main guy that they want, <laughs> you know what I mean? For the black guy on, on the script. So I read and I go in and I, I audition and I come back and I'm on my way home and I get the call and they're saying, yeah, 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 then it's not, they, they're not going, they're going with somebody else. I said, who? They're going with Omar Epps. <laughs> Omar wasn't even in the room. What, what do you mean he was? He was like in some side room or, or like somewhere. I was like, he wasn't even there. He wasn't even there. If I knew Omar Epps was auditioning for the role, I would have wouldn't have wasted my time. It's Omar Epps. Come on now. You know, see, when I went in for this, I, I just got the sides. I did not get any with Steve to discuss where the character's gonna go. They said, here's the sides, don't even get to read the script. I didn't know it was a comedy. I swear to God, because it was the interrogation scene. When it's a cop show, so I put on my blue cop suit, and I go in, and I'm ready to do, you know, my whatever I was gonna do. And Steve goes, just before you start, just so you know, it's not NYPD Blue, it's Moonlighting. And I went, oh crap, I know how to do that. To myself, and and that was it. And it didn't change that much, but it just went that way instead of that way. And boom. Tim was one of the first, if not the first, Lasseter that we saw. And this was like I don't know, a month of casting or three weeks of casting, and he just kept going back. To, you know, when he'd see somebody, like, yeah, he's good, but yeah, Tim Robinson, right? Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> nice. Thank you. And, du and Dulé had a meeting because, um, first of all, he was Dulé. Um, <laughs> but, but also because you know, in, this, in the script, it wasn't a black guy. He was a, a little bit more of a, not a secondary character, but you know, the show was, especially the pilot, the eyes in on the show was through Sean. And you know, I think that Dulé wanted to know that if he was going to take this seriously, that it, it was, he was going to have something really to play. And, um, and it wasn't precisely on the page um, written for him in any way. And so uh, we said, well, we'd love to sit down with Dulé because the idea of this being really kind of feeling, you know, like a two-hander at the front of it um, is much more appealing in the long term. And so we sat down and, and I knew him uh, a little bit and knew that he was a funny guy despite doing mostly dramatic work um, to that point. And so he came in and he was great and funny. And, and the funny thing about that is I did have to read for the network uh, and James Roday already had the role, but somehow he ended up showing up at my house to rehearse the scene before, <laughs> I, before I had to go in and read. Uh, with, did I read with him? Yeah. No. Well, yeah, we yeah, did, we did like, we did like a one-time like read at the network type of right. thing. But you know, and and James was fantastic because as soon as James was cast, he was like, anything you guys need me to do to like help everybody else, I'll be there. So he actually read with a bunch of people and. And then he went over and, and worked with you to make sure that they had chemistry. Right. But in hindsight, I mean, if he was here, he could tell you the story. He was like, wait a second. Why am I pulling up to Dulé Hill's house when I have the job already? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, James, well, come in, please, come in, please. <laughs> and that's a tribute to James. As soon as James was cast, he was there for just about every audition for Gus. And he, I, I've never heard of that with, a, with an actor staying there. And, and when Dulé came... It was just what we call a general meeting. It was wasn't about he was Dulé was too important to read and all that stuff and <laughs> and and I was you know it, it, Chris says it you know it was wasn't a black guy it was just it was racially it was non specific yeah. yeah and so I thought Dulé was too cool for Gus you know and then we we came in and he was just we just started talking to him and he's just a great guy and and really cool and like okay I'm sold and Dulé says okay you want to do this and he's got got the script memorized. I'm like, I didn't know we were going to do that. So they ended up reading it, and they had great chemistry. And uh, to apologize to all the other actors we brought in um, for Gus, yeah, we had James and, and Dulé actually secretly rehearsing together. So the net Because sometimes the network, you, you know, you have something you think is perfect, and the network's like, um, I don't know. We don't understand it. They actually had James come back and read it a second time. So um, on the same day. And because uh, we're like, okay, that's it, that's it, right? And they're like, mm, can we do it one more time? And so, uh, and then they, and then they got it, and, you know. And and Tim, Tim was the only actor 
that without, as soon as he walked out of the room, they said, that's it. With the well, but, um, hey, uh, Dulé was like six minutes later. Uh, hey, I'm so, so, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I have good and bad news. The bad news is we only have one more time. I uh, want question for one uh, time for one more question. The bad news is uh, apparently I'm drunk right now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, but the good news is we have time for one more question. Uh, so, and, and, and I, it, if it's at all possible, if I, if I could pick, Savannah was the one who actually was bugging Dulé to bug me to actually get you guys here. So I feel like it might be appropriate that Savannah gets Savannah, let's, let's do, do, it. It. do it. Thank you, Savannah. Now, Savannah, and we met yesterday. Yes, yes see? No, so Savannah. We, we walked in yesterday. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Savannah, before you ask your question, I have to say, Zach Levi here, just met him yesterday. I've been to this place three times. He's been here working his butt off for this great mm -hmm. cause, and I, I am so in awe of you. You are so cool. I love you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. We came yesterday morning. We came to a party last night. You're still there working hard, uh, just like working the room, and uh, it's amazing energy and talent. And uh, well, this is this is what I want. I want you all to blow up Zach's uh, Twitter line, saying, "Get on site. Get on site. Get on site. Get on site." <laughs> you you missed that question. They're like, "When is Zach gonna be on site?" And I'm like, uh, "We we we thought about it. We just think he's not interested." <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I, so I think, I, I love, I think everybody's really looking I, for a commitment, I, that's all. No, I, I would love to. I, okay. Unfortunately, no, so we'll take yes. We'll take yes right now. That's all. So, Savannah, Savannah, why don't you, why don't you lead us out here? Last question. Uh, well, first off, does the Get Road Data tweet offer still, uh, does it still apply, Dulé? Uh, how about I follow you anyway? All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was just wondering, uh, when you were coming up with the characters and when you like first saw the script and when you wrote it, um, did you ever like know a Lassie or like a Sean or a Gus that like inspired you to like make a character about them? Was there any like funny times that that happened? Uh, the Lasser character is actually Carlton Lasser is a friend of mine who um, I've known forever uh, named Brian Lasseter. And uh, he- That's a stretch. Uh, but he's yeah. not quite as big a dick, I would imagine. <laughs> Uh, and uh, he was the only character I really named directly after somebody. Um, Gus and Sean, I like to think, are the well, perfect split of my character. Well, what is my what is my first name? Oh, Burton, which is my dad's name. So, and also your uncle's name, right? No. No. <laughs> well, my brother's best friend is is B U R T Bert. Okay, there we go. Brother's Bert. That's what it is. I knew it was something. And uh, so, and then Sean and Gus is like, those, those are the two sides of my personality. It's like sometimes I'm a lot like Sean and I can say the right thing in the right moment, but a lot of the times I have the same insecurities that Gus does. And I'm, I am by, uh, um, by design a rule follower, not a rule breaker. So it's, it's really easy for me to write both, of those, uh, write both of those parts. And oddly enough, Chief Vic was named after Michael Vic before that whole dog thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh wow. And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause and a thank you to Chris and Stephen Dulé and Tim. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. If you guys wouldn't mind, if you want, if you want to just stand right in the front of the in front of the stage to take that little awkward moment where everybody can take a picture of you, and then we'll send you on your way, and then you guys can all play some video games and have some drinks. How's that sound? Awkward moments, standing awkwardly, taking pictures. It's a song I wrote. <laughs> Do not harass the talent. We got guys. I'm so sorry. We got to get them out of here as fast as possible too. They uh, they do have flights to catch. Oh, your car's here. I'm being told your car's here. You guys want to po post? Po Chris, get in there. Go go take a picture with all those guys. Come on. Big group picture. Big group picture. There you go. Hey, the big cheese. Thank you guys again. Let's give him a round of applause as we're walking out of the building.